Diddy, Biggie, and Jiggy. 1997 was a weird time. After the passing of the legendary Notorious B.I.G., Diddy and Bad Boy Records started to dominate the industry with flashy suits, Versace pieces, and lush production. This, along with the commercialization of hip hop, allowed them to pump out hit after hit after hit. Then came along a 27 year old Al Simmons, better known as DMX, who would come along and just change hip hop forever. And this would all start because of his debut album, It's Dark and Hell is Hot. Today I'm going to speak about DMX's rough upbringing, his entry to the industry, and how the rough tales on his debut album would change the course of hip hop as we know it. So where do we begin? Well, Al Simmons had a rough upbringing in New York. He suffered from severe bronchial asthma, was hit by a drunk driver, beaten by his mother and her boyfriends, serious poverty, getting drunk at seven years old, lived in children's homes, and well, lived on the streets at the age of 14. It's safe to say, DMX had it rough, something that would later reflect in his debut album. Funnily enough, around this time, he went to jail for stealing a dog. How ironic. <coughs> Even as an upcoming rapper, he had a tough time. He had respect by his peers in the industry, but no major label was offering him a deal. Do you have any favorite, like, was there a certain, like, who to you was the MC that was the best at the art of freestyling? I know you got LL standing here, but you know, um, we can be on. <laughs> that's a tough one. The best, I mean, I, I have to say, I'd have to say me. You know what I mean, not, I'd, I'd have to say that on the strength that, you know what I'm saying, I, I write what I like to hear. Even recalling Diddy passing him up. And one thing I respect about Puff, one thing I respect about him and real shit is that at least he told me to my face what he felt. And when, when D, D told Puff, he said, yo, if you like the loss, you're gonna love X. Mm. And I spit or whatever, and he was like, ah, and, um, his voice is too rough, he's not marketable. But back to 1998, it's hard to state just how popular Diddy, Puff Daddy, and Bad Boy Records were after the passing of the icons Tupac and Biggie. They were pumping out these ready made dance floor anthems, club hits, big budget videos. Almost single handedly, Diddy took hip hop head first into the bling era and the masses ate it up. But DMX eventually got picked up by Def Jam and well, rather than getting DMX to fold into the bling and the fashion of the current era, instead they had a vision. A vision to go in the complete opposite direction. You see, DMX wasn't no Diddy. He wasn't going to sit up there in shiny suits. So in his debut major label single, Get At Me Dog, we get a grimy music video. DMX, bare chest, black and white lens, barking in a Manhattan hip hop club. He opens with this. Let's take it back to the streets, mother And that's exactly what DMX did. It was a complete 180. Instead of Rolexes, clubs, silk sheets, we got Timberland boots, bandanas, and a lot of pit bulls. DMX basically grabbed what he thought hip hop should represent, the streets, and pushed it back into the public eye. And the rest of its dark and hell is hot would follow suit. Tales about trauma, tales about his abuse, his hospital trips, his homelessness. It was gritty. In an era of over commercialization, it was a breath of fresh air for hip hop. A tale of survival pure survival. But it wasn't all rage and anger. Prayer delved into his relationship with God and look through my eyes is a gut-wrenching ballad about his fractured past. And if you've never met me then you've no right to judge me. You've got a good heart but this heart can get ugly. And the convo, a reflection of DMX acknowledging his wrongdoing. So for me, eternal life scared me with the hurt and the curse. Turn the grace when the hurt, turn the faith. No
and while shifting the genre's aesthetics, which he would do massively, he would also shift the sound and bring sub-genres to a much wider audience. Taking the horrorcore pushed by artists like Ghetto Boys and Gravediggers, DMX would explore his psyche by adapting many ghastly personalities and characters. On the track X is Coming, he would adapt Freddy Krueger's iconic nursery rhyme. On Stop Being Greedy, he would voice a man stuck in poverty, while also exploring the monster that was within this man. And on Damien, he would voice a satanic figure, pushing him to make immoral decisions every single day. Why is it every move I make turned out to be a bad one? Where's my guardian angel? Need one? Wish I had one. Yeah, this paved the way for the experimental figures that would follow, whether it be Tyler the Creator eating a cockroach in the Yonkers video, Kendrick exploring the fight for survival amidst violence and horror on 2012's Good Kid Mad City, or Eminem who won a Grammy two years later for his character exploration on the Slim Shady LP. One thing was clear to see, DMX was exploring the depths of his horrific mental state and psyche due to the effects of his poverty and childhood, quite the opposite of the bling era that was blossoming due to Bad Boy Records. And look, It's Dark and Hell is Hot was largely produced by Dame Grease and PK, but DMX also decided to take a chance on a teenage producer, Swizz Beats. And well, Rough Riders Anthem turned into the ultimate DMX Anthem. And Swizz went on to produce the majority of DMX's sophomore album, then carving out a seminal name in hip hop, working with the likes of Jay Z, Beyonce, Lil Wayne, and Kanye West. He's a staple of the genre at this point, and DMX introduced this man to the world. And DMX's influence just still continues to this day, from ASAP Ferg, to Skepta, to Denzel Curry, to Kendrick Lamar, you can all see little glimpses of him in these artists. His gritty style even paved the way for New York MCs like Jadakiss to have very successful careers. It's Dark and Hell is Hot fought against the industry, it fought against the commercialisation of DMX's beloved genre. He wanted to take it back where it belonged, the streets, and well, it's safe to say, he did just that. It was rowdy, grimy, it was aggressive, confrontational, and explored trauma and life's battles, a tale of survival, and this was only the beginning. It went number one, and well, in the same year, so did his sophomore album, Flesh of My Blood, and so did his next album, and so did his next album, and so did his next album five number one albums in a row. DMX was one of the most beloved artists in all of hip hop. He was one for the people. And It's Dark and Hell is Hot is one of the most pivotal albums in the history of the genre. Energy, I'ma tear it down. It doesn't matter whether I'm first, second, third, or fourth. When I leave the fucking stage, the show is over, nigga. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. It means more than you could ever imagine. Also, go follow me on Twitter. I talk about music every single day on there and it's kind of where I got this platform from in the first place. And I'll see you in the next one.